Today's Namaste Yoga continues our Yoga Stories 2 series with the Asatoma Mantra and our class today is about clearing the channels to gather prana. Hello and welcome to episode 239 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes. Today I'm wearing capri yoga pants and a long sleeve bamboo top. And thank you to Dusky Leaf for our props. Today you're going to need your yoga mat and you're going to need a bolster and probably some kind of folded blanket uh, to sit up on for some seated forward folds we're doing today. Today is an intermediate to advanced class, advanced because there's a lot of seated poses. You can do them sitting in a chair. Um, there's a lot of uh, pranayam today, a lot of seated breath practice. So this takes a more mature practitioner to be able to do that sitting to come and sit quietly so that's why I labeled it an intermediate to advanced practice. We have a testimonial today from Bill who has COPD and experienced significant improvement in his breathing from practicing Namaste Yoga 111 opening to breath. Yeah hello Melissa my name is Bill I'm uh, 72 years old and I've recently had some issues with shortness of breath and uh, was told by the doctor to stay on oxygen all the time. Uh, he thinks I have COPD and uh, I'm still pretty active at 72 and it's really uh, hard for me to just, you know, deal with the, with, the, with the oxygen all the time. And I've done some yoga exercises in the past but um, today uh, I googled uh, Bikram yoga and COPD and I read some comments and I found I found you there and I, I just watched and, and, and participated with you and the two ladies that were with you in episode number 11 in opening the chest and before I started, and I was not on auction, I was not using auction. Before I started, I'm, I had one of these little meters you put on your finger. And my auction level was, absorption level was about 86 or 87. And after I finished uh, working with you, uh, it was up to 90. So I'm really encouraged to continue doing this work. So thank you so much, Bill, for leaving me that message on SpeakPipe. It was really great to hear such a measured improvement from practicing yoga. So it's amazing that you can actually measure that. So thanks so much for that. And thanks for leaving your testimonials on SpeakPipe, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook. I love hearing from you. And there are directions on how to do that at thankyoumelissa.com. Okay, let's go ahead and get started for today. So go ahead and rest back on your back. Oh, while, while you're doing that, I'll let you know that uh, today, as of today, as in the day we're filming, we released 10 brand new videos on our membership site, Shoulder Shorts. So by the time you're watching it, this, our members will have had two days with those new, brand new videos. And there are 10 videos, 20 to 30 minute videos uh, to release your shoulders. And the big deal is that in our culture, a lot of the fine motor movements that we do on our personal electronic devices and on our computers really stiffen up our shoulders. And things that we do like working on our computers, commuting and sitting in chairs slouch us and they start to stiffen uh, the muscles of our 
upper back and shoulders. And so these videos are really designed to help to counter those things and bring big range of mo motion through your shoulder joints again. So I'm looking forward to hearing how the members are enjoying those. And, and uh, if you're not a member already, you can go on melissawest.com to find out how to become a member. And also we include that in the show notes for every single one of our Namaste Yoga videos as well. Okay. So as you're resting back here, take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And then tuck your shoulder blades in underneath you. Place your feet flat on the floor with your knees bent. Press into your feet and lengthen long through your tailbone. And you can either leave your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor or you can lengthen your legs out long. See what feels best for you today. And then with your spine as the midline, bring awareness to the two sides of your body. Notice any differences between the right and the left side of your body. Notice if one side is resting towards the ground a little bit more, one side feels a little bit more tense or lifted off the ground a little bit more. And as you begin to bring awareness to your breath, just notice if your breath is flowing more freely into one side of your body than the other. And then while you stay lying on your back with your legs out long, I'm going to lengthen out your side body. So again, to bring awareness to the two sides of your body, take your arms overhead and side bend to your left side so that you're feeling length along your right side of the body all the way down into your Ascending colon in your large intestine. Feel your breath along the right side of your body here. And then inhale back to the center. Take a breath here. And check in again and feeling the difference between your right and left side of your body. Feeling energy movement along the right and the left side of your body. And then inhale here. And exhale, side bend over to the right side of your body. Feeling that length being created along the left side of your body and especially along your descending colon here. And then come back to your center and draw your right knee into your chest here. And if you have any knee issues, you're going to hold on behind your knee. Here you're pressing on your ascending colon to encourage the apan vayu, the downward flow of energy, to encourage the elimination of waste. And this can be physical waste, it could be emotional, mental, 
any kind of uh, waste from your body. And when you clear waste from your body, you're making space for uh, the, you're purifying your body, so you're making space for good prana to flow through your body. And then you can release your right leg down. And again, take a moment to feel the difference between your right and left sides, particularly the flow of energy on your right and left sides. And then when you're ready, you can draw your left leg in, hugging your left knee into your chest again, remembering if you have any issues holding on behind your knee. Pressing on your descending colon now, encouraging that upon vayu, that downward flow of energy for the elimination of waste, releasing what no longer serves. And then release your left leg down, taking a moment here again to check in between the two sides of your body. And then here you can bend your knees and either roll to your side or tuck your chin and rock yourself up. And we're going to come into lunge pose to open up the fronts of your hips. Okay, so let's start on all fours and walk your hands back to your knees. And you'll start by walking your left leg through. Take your hands on either side of your left foot. Sink down through your front left foot and come upright, feeling an opening in the front of your right hip. Inhale, take your arms straight up. Drop your left arm down and bend towards your left leg. And then come back to the center, shift back. So you walk back towards your knees and then walk your right leg through. Take your hands on either side of your right foot, sink down through your front right foot, coming up right here. Bring your arms up, drop your right arm down and then side bend towards your bent right knee.
and then release this down come back onto all fours take your hands underneath your shoulders your knees underneath your hips tuck your toes under stretch out the necks of your toes inhale here lean back exhale straighten out through your legs and then take your right leg out give your right leg a shake bring your right knee forward to your right wrist reach your left leg back and long for pigeon pose ik pad rajkopathasan and here you can either stay here or if this pose doesn't work for you you can always come on to your back and do figure four pose so lying on your back with your legs crossed like this so whatever works best for you and your body today the intention is to stretch your hips for all the seated postures we'll be doing today And then you'll step back into Adho Mugsvanasan. In this time, take your left leg up and give it a shake. Bend your left knee forward to your left wrist. Reach your right leg back and long. And fold forward over your bent left leg with the option to stay on your back with figure four pose. And then you can release this posture from your body and come to a comfortable seated position. So for today, I'm going to sit kneeling on a block. And we're going to do our mantra and mudra for today. Okay, so for this week, we're going to continue with the Dharm Chakra Mudra. And it's the same mudra we did last week because we are doing the same kind of thing of looking at that veil of moving between the illusion of uh, of dualities <laughs> okay <laughs> real yoga for real people explanations here <laughs> do you ever have that where you can't find your words that happens to me all the time so this week we're focusing on the veil of illusion between duality of darkness and light and death and immortality. So for this mudra, the Dharm Chakra Mudra, you bring your thumb and index finger together in both hands, and then your left finger touches the thumb and index finger of your right hand. Your left hand faces in, your right hand faces away. And him will put the mantra on the screen on your left, my right. <laughs> My left, your right. <laughs> we'll get there today. <laughs> uh, and I have to speak louder too. Okay, here we go. So, um, shall we do call and response since this is only, this is our third week actually doing it. We did it one more time. We did it last year almost at the same time this time last year as well. Could be my mic's just fallen back. Okay, there we go. Now I can speak at my normal level. 
Okay, let's make space with breath and a sigh. We'll do call and response first time and then we'll do it two more times together. Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya now all together two more times. Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya So you can stay seated like this with the mudra in your hands and I'm going to share with you the teachings for today. In the origin story from the Brida Ranyak Upanishad, which we started talking about last week, as Prakriti, our material world, and Purush continue to separate and divide, the demons and gods go to war with one another. As is the case with these mythological stories, the gods are outnumbered by the demons. The gods then devise a plan to defeat the demons through the power of mantra. By chanting mantra, Prakriti, manifest reality, will dissolve back into timeless Purush. So what does this mean for us yogis? Today, as it relates to our theme, it means that through mantra, we can be led from darkness to light and from, immortal from death to immortality. Alana Kevalya says that it means that mantra has the ability to reunify the feelings of separation we have from our source. So in our story, the gods summon the mouth with its great power of speech to chant the mantra to overcome the demons. The demons, however, cleverly attack the mouth and wound its speech so that it delivers not just a beautiful mantra, but also harmful words. And so you can see the, you can start to see the relations on and off our yoga mat to the way our mouth can deliver beautiful speech, but also harmful words. When the mouth fails, the god must find another way. The gods ask the eyes to chant the sacred mantra. However, the demons attack the eyes so that they don't just see what is beautiful, but also what is ugly and fearful. And so you can also relate this to your day-to-day -day life. The way your eyes can take in the beauty, but also how they can become fearful of what appears to be ugly in our world. Next, the gods call on the ears to hear only the perfect vibration of the mantra. Consequently, the demons attack the, the words and with harsh ears that are susceptible to terrible untruths, the mantra is spoiled again. And you can again see the correlation in your day-to-day -day lives, the way that even though there are so many truths spoken to us, our ears tend to dwell on the untruths and the harsh words that are spoken to us. So this continues down the line in our mythological story where through the sense of touch and the sense of smell as well. For the sake of time, we're going to continue moving on in our story. <laughs> Finally, the gods decide to use the mind to chant the mantra to win the war. So do you think this is going to work? Well, if the mind were to focus intently, surely it could win. 
However, the mind becomes filled with negative thoughts, wanders aimlessly, and was, of course, useless in overcoming the demons. So I don't know about you, but probably my mind would be <laughs> useless at being able to hold the mantra perfectly as well. <laughs> Maybe your mind would be perfect at it. <laughs> So finally, the, or the gods realized that the organs of action or like the sense organs, right? Touch, taste, see, sight, um, you know, all your sense organs and smell, thank you, have failed because they are part of Prakriti. They must move beyond speech, sight, sound, touch and smell and thought to defeat the demons. The only answer was the driving force behind Purush. The solution was prana. Prana was able to invoke the essence of the mantra and whose ultimate connection to the numinous source is indivisible. So through Prana's embodiment of the mantra, peace was restored and the gods were able to rest into the perfect whole and complete nature. And so the idea is that Prana was able to embody the mantra beyond the senses. So think of a time in your life when you've been able to move beyond your senses, your five senses, and embody this kind of space of, of bliss, this unlimited space, this luminous space that's beyond our material world. And that's that, that space of expression of mantra that took place. So see how this story relates to your life, and I realize there's there's several layers to it and that's kind of the beauty of mythology too so you can dip in it's like dipping your toe in the lake <laughs> or, or choosing a piece of fruit uh, to stick your fondue in <laughs> you can see what kind of fruit you want today as how it relates to your life and um, begin to form an intention of what it is you're trying to create sustain or let go of in your life and then once you've formed your intention, you can stay seated. We're gonna stay seated for the next little bit. If you wanna stretch out your legs, you can. We're going to begin with facial yoga for your mouth. So we're gonna work through each of these senses in our class today. Okay, so I can't even tell you how many requests I've had for facial yoga. And um, I have to admit, <laughs> a huge part of me has re um, resisted this. But then today I started practicing it and it's a lot of fun actually. <laughs> so um, I'm starting to embrace it. So I think I've been saying for a long time, I'll do it for the members and I will. So send me your facial yoga resources and I, I'm gonna probably start putting this together for the members now. So we're gonna start with a facial yoga exercise for your mouth and this is great because we do carry a lot of tension around our mouth when we tend to get worried or anxious yeah you can see it in people's mouths that you, people that yeah even mine you know even mine even me even perfect me <laughs> Observe yourself. So we're gonna do this. Okay, and even, you know, anyway, the puffer fish, or digging a hole. It's a beautiful exercise that it releases all this tension around your mouth. It feels so good. You won't believe how much more relaxed your mouth feels after this. And you're probably thinking right now, if you'd stop talking, your mouth would be more relaxed. So let's do this. I'm gonna just do exactly like what it sounds like. You blow out and relax. We're going to do this 10 times. Does that feel good? Okay. So that's the puffer fish. Now, just feel, does that feel good around your mouth? <laughs> I'm a convert <laughs> to facial yoga. <laughs> okay, now the next one is, you're gonna put your, see these beautiful lines you have from smiling so much? You're gonna put your hands on those lines and you're going to smile. 
And this smiling releases endorphins that help to diminish your stress hormones. Okay. We do this one more time. So you can do this anywhere. You can do this when your husband drives you to pick up your daughter from soccer and all the other soccer moms will think you're cuckoo. <laughs> and then one more we're going to do, you'd put your thumbs in the, at the base of your nose and there's a little indentation there. This is for your large intestine meridian. You're just going to circle outward there. And then move down and there's another indentation just right below it, down and out, yeah, and then circle right there. And it might be a little tender. And that's it. So there you go. Mouth yoga today for facial yoga. Okay, we're going to come up to standing now. So let's do Adho Mukhsvanasana as a way to transition up to standing. Okay, tuck your toes under. Inhale here. Exhale, come into Adho Mukhsvanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And from here you can walk your feet into your hands and make your way up to standing. Okay, so for ears that hear, I'm going to drop your ears to your shoulders. And then lift your head back up to the center and drop your ear to the other side. And then come back to the center and you're going to just take your fingers and massage all along your ears. So just get right into the creases of your ears. And then do ear to shoulder again and see if anything's changed, or if your ear is able to drop more to your shoulder. And then ear to other shoulder. And then back to the center. So mouth that speaks, ears that hear, eyes that see. So for the eyes that see, you're going to rub your palms together until you get some heat. And so here you're creating prana here, prana and energy. So all these things that we're doing are helping to clear the channels so that you get, you, you get that clear channel. You know, you're clearing out the gunk so that you've got that clear channel so that prana can flow in your body. And then you're going to place your palms over your eyes. And let that sink into your eyes. So let your eyes be bathed in darkness and allow your eyes to be soothed by this prana.
And when you feel your hands don't have any more heat, then you're supposed to rub your palms together again. And then place them over your eyes again. Is this supposed to help improve your vision as well? I'm going to do this one more time. And then release your hands and bring your arms up to the side of your body so that you can, with your thumbs pointing up, so that you can see your thumbs in your peripheral vision. So just enough in front of you so that you can see them. And you're gonna look over to your left thumb, then up to your third eye and over to your right thumb. Up to your third eye, over to your left thumb, up to your third eye, over to your right thumb. So just a little bit of eye yoga. And if you have glasses on for this, you should take your glasses off. Keep your head still for this. And then let that go. So ears, eyes, and then we're going to uh, do touch. So for your hands, we're going to do a little bit of hand yoga here. So for this one, roll your shoulders back and down. Engage the muscles of your back. Bring your hands up. You're going to make tight fists and then spread your fingers as wide as you can. Tight fists and spread your fingers as wide as you can. And then bring your hands out in front of you. You're gonna cross your thumbs over to your pinkies and curl all your fingers down and then reverse that. So pinkies out and thumbs out. So cross, curl them all in and then open them all out. And then we're going to bring your thumb and all your fingers together like a beak of a, a duck. Quack, quack. And then <laughs> you're going to just uh, keep your arms still and just move your wrists from side to side. There you go, little hand yoga for touch. And then take your feet wide, inhale here. Exhale, you're gonna roll your pelvis over your leg bones for a wide-legged standing forward fold here. And then you're going to release this. You can come up back up to standing and then make your way down to seated. We're going to do a breath practice for your nose, <laughs> for smell. 
Okay, so choose a comfortable seated position, either cross-legged on your meditation cushion, kneeling on a block, or sitting in a chair. We're going to do Nadi Shodhana. And this version, we're going to breathe 10 times in through your left nostril, 10 times out through your right nostril. And this was, was for smell. So just cover your right nostril with your right hand up near the top, and we'll breathe in and out 10 times here. Lower your right hand and we'll replace it with your left hand. Then release your left hand and we'll stretch out our legs with half cow's face forward fold. So sit with your legs straight and long. Cross your right leg over your left leg. You can elevate your hips on a folded blanket here. Inhale, exhale, fold forward over your left leg. Inhale and come on up. You'll straighten your right leg out, cross your left leg over. Exhale, fold forward until you feel stretch on the back of your right leg.
and then come back to your seated position. The next version of Nadi Shodhana that we're going to be doing is to clear your mind. So for this one, this Shodhana means purification. So this one clears your mind. Take your left hand, your thumb and index finger together. Your right hand, place your first two fingers in the center of your forehead. Close your right nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with your ring finger. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. And continue with this in your own breath rhythm. And then the next time you breathe out through your left nostril, take a moment here and just notice if your mind isn't a little clearer. Then from here, we're going to stretch out our legs with Up Avishta Konasana. So wide-legged seated forward fold. Again, it can be helpful <laughs> to elevate yourself by sitting up on a folded blanket or blocks probably a little too high, but that's what I have today. And then you're going to come back up to seated, to sit either cross-legged on your blanket or, <laughs> hey, this works, I can sit cross-legged on my block too. You can kneel on a block or sit on a chair. And we're going to do alternate nostril breathing again, this one with retention. And the idea with this one is that you're going to gather prana and hold it inside. So. We're gonna breathe in for four. You're gonna hold the breath in for four. So we're gonna have both nostrils closed and then you're gonna breathe out for four. Okay, so I'll count the breath for you. Um, thumb and index finger together on your left hand. Close your right nostril. Breathe in, two, three, four. Close both nostrils, two, three, four. Open your right, breathe out, two, three, four. Breathe in through your right, two, three, four. Close both, two, three, four. Breathe out through your left, two, three, four. Breathe in through your left, two, three, four. Close both, hold, two, three, four. Breathe out through your right, two, three, four. Breathe in through your right, two, three, four. Close both and hold, two, three, four. Breathe out through your left, two, three, four. So continue that with your own breath rhythm.
Then the next time you breathe out through your left nostril, just notice the effects of this breath practice if it feels like you've gathered energy, if you've gathered prana inside. And then we'll stretch our legs out one more time before we finish with our Asatoma mantra. So it might be useful to have your hips elevated again. And you may want a bolster for underneath your knees if your hamstrings are tight. So I'm using the new dusky leaf round bolster because it fits nicely with the shape of your legs here. We did a nice blog post on this recently. Have we posted that one yet? One seated forward fold. If not, it'll be soon. How to get the blog? Oh, the blog is answers your questions. So if you have questions, you can send me your questions and then I answer them. <laughs> and then you can sign up to receive that in your inbox too. Okay, so let's finish up with a the the Dharm Chakra Mudra and the Asatama Mantra. So the Dharm Chakra Mudra, you bring your thumb and index finger together on both hands. Your left finger comes to your thumb and index finger. Your, I think it's your left hand faces out, your right hand faces towards you. Okay, so let's do this mantra together three times, making space with breath and a sigh. Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityor Mahamritam Gamaya Om Masatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Mahamritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Mahamritam Tamgamaya. And you can either finish your practice seated here or you can rest back in Shavasana now. So the quote that I have for you today is from Helen Keller, and you can probably already guess what the quote I chose was. <laughs> but I just knew I had to choose this quote for today. So the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And I feel like this is what, when you come to this space of prana where everything is clear, um, that it is this very heartfelt space. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And when we clear all these channels through our practice of yoga or through the practice of chanting mantra, we can come to this beautiful, heartfelt, clear place. So reflect back on this class and on your experience of chanting the Asatoma mantra moving from untruth to truth, from darkness to light, from death to immortality, and what this means to you in your life, of 
moving from the sense organs to this clear, pure prana. What's one small thing you're going to take with you from your yoga practice today and into your life? So rest back for as long as you wish, and then when you feel ready, you can begin to wiggle and stretch out, deepen your breath. Bend your knees and roll to your right side and slowly make your way up to seated. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May you experience the strength of our mountains. <laughs> may you be as rooted as the trees in our forests, and may your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. Namaste. Om Shanti. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.